So I'm out here in Stinson Beach, California. It's almost May, it's late April, and uh, I am competing with an air compressor from some guys building a deck, but I am so loud, you won't even hear that air compressor, I guarantee it. I wanna teach you guys how to move really big plants, right? So uh, you can do it all by yourself. This is a 30 inch box Mediterranean fan palm. This is a fantastic palm for the beach. The beach is always windy. There's a lot of salt air coming in. This plant's native to the Mediterranean region where there's like salty ocean, a lot of wind, a lot of exposure. So this thing is like the toughest palm on the planet as far as I know. Now, uh, these things will grow all the way up to Seattle, Washington, even up into Canada on the seashore. So right now we're gonna get this thing off the truck. You can see the ramp that I put together here off the truck. I've got special little uh, ramp adapters for my flatbed truck. If you buy some palms from me, you're gonna see me show up and I'm probably gonna make you be the camera person of the video that we will take at your house. But right now, uh, my client's holding the camera I talked her into, so she's being a really good sport. This is how you get a big tree off the truck. Mediterranean fan palm, Chamarops humulus from Europa. Okay, so what you wanna do first is you wanna get to the, the, the Punta de Balance. And what that means is the balance point. And you wanna get to the balance point. You, you can check the balance point with one Dito, that's a finger. It's gonna be a Spanish lesson here. These are my buddies. This is Rose Bin. And you see, I just got plucked by this tree. There's some serious thorns on it, so be careful. Uh, and this is Ariel. These guys are like the biggest, toughest dudes out at Stinson Beach for landscaping purposes. You heard it here first. So here we go, the Punta. I'm gonna take this solo. I'm gonna go solo. Look at this big, giant tree. It probably weighs 600 pounds. And I can hold it with my finger, my one, look, my pinky. I can hold it with my dito. Once you get into the dito, that's the angle of attack that you want. So you'll have one person in the back holding the uh, punta de balance with their hands, not with their one dito. And then I'll do the rest. Here you go, ready to go? Here we go, guys. If you do it by yourself, it's hard to hold the balance point all by yourself. But watch how easy this is. You get a little momentum going, you start rocking and rolling, Come down. This is where the plant sometimes tries to slide and kill me. Hasn't happened yet. Knock on wood. Okay, but we're going down now. Just walk the tree down the slope. No problem. So easy. Let's go back a little, guys. That way. I haven't perfected my Espanol. Okay, a little more. A little, okay. Vamanos. Okay, just like that. And believe it or not, this is the little plant that we just took off the truck. Sometimes I actually do that by myself. I'm gonna take over camera duties and I wanna introduce you to somebody. Come on in this beautiful garden. It's a brand new garden. You're gonna meet Tana, Tana, Tani Mead. She's my good friend. And look, here's the big one. Show us the big one, Tani. Here's look at the, our new big Mediterranean fan palm. Look at that just thing. Just arrived this morning. Look at that thing. Very happy on site. Why on earth would you want palm trees of all plants? Well, this particular client that was their one plant request on this job and so um, I went to Gary Gregg at Golden Gate Palms for my source and I heard that guy's lame why'd you go there because he's funny oh well that's that's a good <laughs> thing and he has awesome palms all right and knows his stuff so these were recommended to me to suit the site well with the windy salty conditions right on well here we go we're getting the whole deck together here but look at what tawny's doing she's getting all these really cool coastal adapted plants and uh we've got a uh, hesperalo over here this is another plant like the mediterranean yes. fan palm it's yes. almost impossible to kill and look at this is a special yellow version the wild version is pink and uh what else do you know about this plant tawny uh, it likes sandy soil, very dry conditions, and um, we're going to put it in a gopher basket because oh, yes. the gophers are rampant in the sand. Let's talk about those cool baskets you have yes. there. These are um, awesome baskets. They come in a box like this, and then Look at that. you put them in like that. They're perfect soil. radio. That's a five-gallon size. They have 15-gallon size, and it's... As I told you earlier, it's been on my list to actually carry these at the nursery. You I've been meaning to should. call this company up, I, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna start having. So if you want these gopher baskets, I highly recommend it. I buy them by the case. Yeah. So this is what we do here. Um, you never want to uh, have these gophers just take out your whole garden right now. That's I have one at my house right now that's killing a really nice palm. I should have put in a basket. So I learned my lesson. Um, so out here we have a septic system, 
And uh, that's a whole bunch of pipes under the ground. And out at Stinson Beach, there is no sewer system. And so all of the uh, waste goes down into the ground, which is actually the best, most environmental way to dispose of waste. And, but the thing is, you can't park things on top of it because it'll collapse. And you can't plant certain types of plants because of root invasion. And um, I guess there's other restrictions on that too. But um, anyway, the, uh, here's some olive trees we have out there. Are those fruitless? They are fruitless and they were uh, existing on site when I arrived. Oh, they were? Okay, they're, they're already the, here. They're the last plants to remain. Okay, well, it's always good to start with something big. So tell us about your other cool plants you're using here. Um, I have aloe blue elf that has these nice orange blooms that um, start kind of midwinter through this time of year. Some of these plants actually have new spikes coming up, which is pleasing. So that'll be the color in the in the winter. I think that gets to kind of an iridescent pink when it's really drought stressed too. Have you noticed yes, that? Yes, the foliage. The foliage, right. Yeah, yeah, so that'll be really pretty. So we have that happening and we have um, two grasses. This is, um, I have to think of it, it's Blonde Ambition. <laughs> uh, bet, bet, that sounds Maybe? like that sounds that like right? what I was going through in my head when I met my wife. Ah, yes. I had blonde yes. ambition. Yes. Yeah. And I know these, what that's about. Um, this little uh, Formium um, Pratt's Black is I was supposed to get five gallon, but, but I could only four, find four inches. But it's so cute. And it grows fast. And it's going to grow fast. Saved a client a bunch of money. The client doesn't have any. People say, well, how much does that garden cost, Gary? I tell people, this is what I tell them, Tony. I'm like, okay, your garden is going to cost as much as a brand new car. <laughs> exactly the cost of a brand new car. And then they say, well, that's a trick question. Yeah, it's because not a Honda Fit. Is it a Yugo for $12,000 or is it one of those $500,000 Ferraris? And I'm like, exactly. Yes. We could, we could hit the price point anywhere in there. We're either going to buy wildflower seed or we're going to buy huge box trees and crane them in. Or somewhere in between. <laughs> yep. So this is it's, the thing. It's an open, open question. So you can always save money by buying smaller plants that will grow. Think about that, everybody out there. And this is a gorgeous thing. This is Artemisia um, Canyon Gray, and it does a really nice carpet. It will spread up to six feet, and it has really nice um, aromatic foliage. Nice. And that's probably therapeutic too, actually, all that is. wonderful it fragrance. It's a really great brown cover, takes dry sandy con conditions well. Well, let me uh, tell you my favorite plant here. It's gonna be the leucodendron, maybe the palm tree, but maybe very close second, would be your leucodendron safari sunset here. Is that what it is? No, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. And uh, so this guy will get a beautiful red coloration, especially as it gets drought stressed over the years. And it is just such a beautiful plant. What's great about plants like this that have coloration in the foliage is that uh, you're not relying upon a, a quick little bloom like a California poppy or something for like a month and then the rest of the year it doesn't look good. These plants look great all year long, December, January, all through the cold months. And I can tell you I had one of these. It's supposed to be about six feet. Mine um, topped out at 10 and outgrew its space and I took it out. Oh, you did? It well, really you know what? likes Stinson Beach. Well, you know what? They, I see these things down in San Diego County. They grow these things by the, like the mountainside and they cut them back to almost nothing and they continually cut oh. them back for cut foliage. So if you have a leucodendron that gets too big, before you cut it down, try to cut it like really aggressively down lower and it, and it might uh, rejuvenate itself. I'll give that a Sorry try next Sorry that time. you didn't get that information in time. <laughs> All right. That's okay. So here's the garden. Now everyone's gonna wanna see like why people uh, move here. Uh, Tani, can you tell us why people uh, move here? Well, it is surrounded by ocean, Let's go lagoon, see. and parklands. Okay. So you can see here, here is the lagoon. And uh, oh. no, that is not a statue. That is the real deal right there. Let me just frame him up so you can see him a little bit better. And I believe that is all the zoom I have today. But uh, there you go. That's why people move out here. Wonderful wildlife. And- uh, He's hunting for gophers. He's hunting for gophers. <laughs> that would be a wonderful thing. Maybe you could they train do. him. No, they do they do. really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's great. They enjoy small rodents as well as fish. They are uh, remnants of the dinosaurs, and I think he might be ready to take off. No, I haven't bugged him enough for that yet. So let's give a quick little tour. No gardening happening back here yet. This will be phase two. Uh, but here is the beautiful lagoon on the Stinson side, or the, uh, there's basically the way this place is laid out. It's a big giant sand dune. 
if there is a big tidal wave, then it may be no more. <laughs> but between now and then, <laughs> it's a great place to it be. It is a beautiful <laughs> place to be. And uh, there's a big lagoon on this side. Uh, there's a road called Sea Drift on one side, and we are on the inland side of that road. And the, um, oh, there goes our egret. There he goes off into the sunset tea fog of the mountains. Uh, there he goes. So we have the big, beautiful mountains back here. Um, the Stinson watershed is right back in this canyon over here, I believe. Um, and uh, the Stinson complex is composed of uh, oceanfront homes on the other side, on that side, lagoon on this side. There's a road on this side called Sea Drift. And on this side of the road, they're fronting the lagoon. Then it, the whole thing loops around the lagoon. And there's a side over there where there are homes mainly on the lagoon side. And uh, so everyone has this beautiful party in the back. And there's pretty much, you can see everybody here, what do they need, right? They build their house and then what do they need? Right, they need landscaping. So I know this really great person who lives out here, I've known for a really long time. And um, her name is Tawny Mead. And she is the best person to do your landscaping. And uh, there you go. You ready for a bunch of business? I am. All right. Yes. Right, and then when you when you hire Tawny, she's probably going to talk you into a, a whole giant forest of palm trees out here, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whatever. I won't. I won't take we, it. We we take all drought sandy plants into consideration. Right. Right. So I won't take it personally if she doesn't call me after she you watch this video and you hire her. So it's all right. All right, Tawny. Good right. good work out here. Thank you for bringing me such nice trees. Stinson Beach. Call Tawny. <laughs>